welcome. Uh, this is the beginning of the new week, new month, and of course the second quarter. So we walked into the month of April with a uh, a mini meltdown in technology, or shall we say, just simply follow through from the weakness in both the QI, what we were looking for in the semi sector. Um, also looking for maybe continuation of weakness in the queues. Uh, two weeks ago we had a uh, newsletter outlook to be looking at QID taking positions in SOXS, the inverse ETF on the semiconductors, as well as some decent option strategies, uh, vertical put spreads on the SMH. And as of uh, last week, we recommended to come out of those trades on weakness. So right now as far as that is concerned i'm looking at this uh dip as a slight buying opportunity of a few select areas food consumer staples some retail apparel sector stocks and you know we are getting a launch and a lift off of that but more importantly what you're looking at right here are this top six stock indices with uh two types of analytics or a few actually um on the in the upper quadrant, you see this is the ES. We could change that to the S&P 500. But what you're looking at is the person's pivots with the PPS indicator. The middle of the section, this is the advanced decline as it relates to just the S&P 500. That's why it says advanced decline S&P 500. On balance volume, and again, the volume histogram, which I don't find very useful as far as determining uh, strength of uh, trend reversals. What I am also uh, really more intrigued about is the potential for the Russell to outperform some uh, one of our themes that we've been talking about over the last week and a half, especially with trade station clients in the morning market briefing. If you're not familiar with that, every morning, Monday morning, I do the morning briefing session for trade station clients, and I know they put that on their um, YouTube channel as well. What I see happening here is that the market is digging into the old lows and holding against last quarter's pivot support. That's this green line in the sand. I'm not looking at this as uh, as much as a double potential. It is a potential double top, but I'm looking at this more of a, a trading range environment with the potential for the market to not only get back up to this high, but possibly take that high out as we get into the uh, mid-May time frame, which on, on the time axis would be somewhere right around in that zone. Okay, um, Here's what that plan needs in order to fulfill that type of price action. A, we need to first close greater than uh, Monday's high. Second, we need to close greater than the th high from 3.23. That would be what we call a last conditional change breakout. So a close, and X marks the spot, so to speak, a close greater than that level will give us a price confirmation that we have broken a downtrend and that the market is ready to resume or at least go back up and test that, that upper boundary. Next, it would be uh, a good confirming uh, scenario if we get the advanced decline analysis to help lead the way out of here. So if we get more stocks breaking out and on decent volume, then that would give us more confidence and would confirm that um, breakout is valid. So A, we're looking to see if we get a Breakout B, it would be also nice to get one of these little arrows to pop up there. That would be a PPS buy signal. But most importantly, we want to get back into a consecutive series of higher highs and a breakout with the advanced decline analysis. We also want to see volume come into the picture. So it is my supposition that we're looking for, at the very least, a market action to get up into this zone with potential new high in the Russell with those considerations. So we have several um, different things happening on in this world. Obviously, people are now debating whether or not the stock market can continue and make newer highs without the help and the aid of technology. Well, the funny thing is, is not all technology is related equal. There's social media, there's Amazon, there's uh, uh, the semiconductor sector. And quite frankly, we do see a seasonality in the middle of the month for some of that technology to get lifted back to the upside. So we want to be watchful of that. Currently, I want to share with you what the volatility index, and I know I've been sharing this uh, for weeks and months and uh, even as far as back last year, the performance of this. We came into 
the Easter holiday weekend with a short position. As you can see here, it did get stopped out. Yesterday it went long. Today it trailed a stop. You can see exactly what it says here, trailing stop. So it took a, a profit on a trailing stop. It is flat the market right now. Um, knowing the system, of course, it would take uh, perhaps a a follow-through move to the downside to get this thing short. If it does go short, does that guarantee that, again, if the VIX goes down, its inverse relationship to the SPY, SPY would be going up. So it's my contention that there's a, a, a pretty strong uh, chance that we do see maybe not a complete downdraft in the, in the stock market at this point in time, but yet maybe a little bit of a trading range environment, which would be uh, consistent with maybe the VXX coming back down into you know this zone right in there. Uh, if this is, if I bring this into uh, better focus for everyone, and um, you will see that we have this kind of like strong trend line in the market right here uh, in the in the VXX, I it has made kind of like this higher high pattern. I think that if we do follow through with a breakdown, we have a strong chance once again of getting into maybe the 43, 44 area. So. I am more in line with the fact that the market is going to base out here. We have an unemployment report out on Friday. I'm not really looking for the market to tear out to the upside. There's a lot of different sectors. By the way, let's take a gander at those. A lot of different sectors right now that, as you can see, are still negative. Even though we had a very a, a positive day, define positive. Everything was a lot of sectors were in the green. Here are your sector ETFs: XLU, IBB, uh, you know all the big guys, right? Biotech, uh, real estate, telecoms, uh, uh, the Dow Jones Internet. Uh, some of you are familiar with industrials, right? So if I change this uh, symbiology in alphabetical order, these are the um, again home builders, the materials, the energy, the financials, industrials, technology, all the way down the list. Um, you can see everything was up today. But let's take a look at this column that I've just highlighted in white right here, daily signals. Did this positive reversal today or this maybe recovery day generate new fresh buy signals in those sectors and what's the answer no what about weekly did it turn a weekly into a buy signal and the answer is no so that tells me that we're not ready to rip and roar to the upside and yet we're still in a very selective stock pickers market i'll share with you what is kind of on a stronger note today in the um Going into energy, you had a couple, you see these blinking lights. These stocks did generate new fresh daily buy signals. So let's take a look at some of these names real quick. Um, first and foremost, Stato Hydro. Uh, and, and as you can see, here is the buy signal. Um, it's pointing to this PPS. We're in a daily interval. Intervals daily, and so we're looking at this chart right here. Again, Occidental Petroleum generated a daily buy signal. Let's take this uh, a little bit upon further examination. A couple things that we will uh, give uh, some strong note to. It is forming kind of a nice rounding bottom. The relative strength persons, this is the PMC, and for you folks in using Thinkorswim on uh, TOSS, have access. If you click on my name, John Person, you'll find Persons Pivots, PPS, and the PMC. This is a relative strength indicator. We're doing a webinar on this, in fact, Wednesday, hopefully, or we'll introduce a little bit on better use of this. But when it fires off bright blue, it means that this stock, relative to the S&P, is outperforming the market. That's a relative strength type of indicator. It shows it's outperforming the market and guess what money managers like to do? Money chases money. In addition, here's a volume indicator and it is showing that there's a slight uptick in volume. So I would like to see a more sustainable trend. It's just showing that this is a bottoming action rather than a a uh, uh, difference between a, a potential bottoming action and a sustainable trend. A sustainable trend means it took out the high, it's making higher highs, and it's in a trend mode, right? So I would like to see more of a sustainable trend. But the positive event here is that Chevron, CVX, 
it generated a buy signal. You'll see ConocoPhillips, COP. It's now in a more sustainable upside trend. So that's those are positive things for the energy space. There's more green lights blinking, which means there's a change of guard, and we're seeing money flow going into energy as of Tuesday's close. As I scroll on down the list, you'll see a couple other things happened. Of course, United Healthcare in the Walmart scenario, it's generating a daily buy, but for the most part, we're not getting huge amounts of concentration of buy signals of a lot of stocks in every sector and that's what we've done we've broken down the sector the groups and by what the what constitute each column is a signal whether it's a weekly buy signal or a daily buy signal um, going into the industrial sector we had a couple names that are flashing uh, this is Denaher and then Boeing of course generated buy signals but you know, it's in. It, and when I look at something like this, friends, I would just personally just alert you that it's more of a trading range. And here's the trading range right there. It's in a trading range, so it's not really something I would say. Hey, what a sustainable uptrend. The relative strength's improving, but it doesn't tell me that you know this is something that we want to jump on the momentum bandwagon. Let's scroll down and look at uh, technology today. In our trading community, we were talking about Facebook. Now, we've traded Facebook in the uh, upper 149 to 150 handle for some day trades uh, over the last week as a couple uh, major important reasons here, and I'll, I'll highlight these for you right now. Number one, we had longer-term support down here, and that's what we had put out, so that's on a, a, a daily chart. Volume started to go up, so we've seen some very nice uh, trend rides. What I am waiting and watching for right now is to see if we can get a close greater than this 156. Now today, which is very interesting in the options world, if you look at your options volume, there was a whole lot more option volume. Very sneaky. It wasn't like one big lot, but in the upside, um, what you would say option chain, if you look at your call options going up and out between the weeklies all the way to the April 20th and even in the May expiration options we had some pretty un not unusual but a pickup of option um, purchases on the call side more more volume on the call side than a put side so I think what's what's happening if you look at the 60 minute chart you'll also notice something that's very subtle here that every time the market gets down into this near this 150 area you get kind of like that hammer pattern. You get what's called an equal and opposite. It goes down and then straight back up. You get an equal. This is a down candle followed by an opposite with a PPS buy. So there is some buying. There's improved volume. You can see the volume uh, indicators going up. And on a 60-minute basis, the relative strength's improving. So again, let me bring that. What I'm referencing is that the relative strength versus the overall markets kind of improving what would be nice if the market could start to generate follow through and then I mean besides the market getting into 161 I think we have a very strong chance of uh, 165 170 zone and then don't forget uh, probably it's going to take time in the next two two and a half weeks I'd say 15 trading sessions so call it three weeks if you want this gap uh, at least gets tested and partially filled uh, back to the upside in Facebook. I understand really bad news, but uh, Senate hearings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but let me share something with you. This selling pressure did not just start on last week's news. If you use the person market catcher and you 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 understand this little volume, you will notice that up in this zone here, someone was already lightening their the load up into the 180 zone. I think what we're seeing here is that institutions were possibly lighting, lightening up their positions there, and maybe they're getting back in, which makes sense. I mean, if you were selling in the 185, 190, why not get back in at 150? That's a pretty decent trade. So that's what the uh, volume and relative strength indicators that I've created uh, look like. Here's a, a longer term or higher degree time frame uh, scenario. This is the, say, number one point. This is the number two point. Number two point, 
here is higher than price at the number one point. If we go and do this accurately, you will notice something that the relative strength started to weaken. It turned red. In fact, it fired off a momentum histogram uh, relative strength weakness signal right there uh, before the end of the year. So I think there was uh, a little bit of distribution amongst the funds up there and now that we have the market down 40 bucks off its highs uh, we're starting to see maybe a little bit of accumulation coming back into the market that that makes for a very good trade so I'm not saying that that Facebook's you know the best buy in the world but I am saying that it's more than likely due for a rebound and and get back up into that zone so what would we and how are we handling this I think that first and foremost one of the things that you can look for on Facebook is for follow through strength above a close on a 60 minute uh, just greater than 158 and if we take out these highs easily I'm seeing the market kind of come back to 170 and there seemed to be a heavy concentration you can look at this yourself on thinkorswim or your options uh, preferred platform but look at today's option activity in volume not the open interest compare volume to open interest and then tomorrow morning we'll see if that open interest increased or decreased and that'll give you kind of a gauge of whether this was in initiating positions on the long side or short side but there was either way you look at it for every buyer there's a seller and somebody there was a lot of activity in Facebook on upside call options Anyway, I hope you found this information useful, and um, as, again, I wanted to follow up what's going on with the VXX, what's happening with uh, the overall market, and how are these tools helpful for our trading, and as always, we'll be updating when there's new events that uh, take place. Thanks again.